What's going on guys, Britter here, and I found another new resource called Codex, and all I did so far is just sign up, um, signed in. There are paid elements where you see this club thing where you can join the club, um, but we're not going to do that, we're just going to do the free stuff. So we're going to jump into the, all I did was go to the learn HTML, and then this looks like the elements section, so let's jump in and see what this is all about. Kind of looks similar to Free Code Camp. Um, this is called Shooting Star. What is HTML? Welcome to the Origins Trilogy, the beginning of your web development journey. The language we are learning is HTML, or Hypertext Markup Language. It was created by a developer named Tim Berners-Lee in 1991. Today, every website in the world uses HTML. However, HTML is just one piece that is used to build a web page. Most web pages use HTML to create the website skeleton, CSS to modify the website presentation, JavaScript to make it interactive. This course will focus on HTML. We want to build a strong foundation before moving on. As the name suggests, HTML is a markup language. It marks up every piece of content on a web page and defines its type. The language is simple and perfect for beginners. All the programs we write will be HTML files with the file extension .html. Ah, one more thing. You need a code editor. A code editor is a text editor that can write and run code, and we have one here. Let's test it out. All right, so our instructions are, a shooting star is falling on the horizon. Quick, make a wish. Type these two lines of code into line three. So right here. Um, H2, write the date. Okay, I guess I put today's date. All right, slash H2, and then write your wish. P, I wish to learn how to be code. All right, slash P. All right. Then press run. You've just created your first web page with HTML. All right, nice. Okay. Hit complete. All right, on to the next one. Elemental. Elements. To understand how HTML works, we need to start with the elements. The smallest building blocks of the language. An element usually consists of an opening tag, the content, and a closing tag. A tag is enclosed in angle brackets. So this is one HTML element where P is the opening tag, hello world is the content, and slash P is the closing tag. The P paragraph element tells the browser that the content inside is paragraph text. Let's take a look at a basic HTML program that displays a message in the browser. Uh, I'm a new web developer. The body element defines an HTML document's body, and it's where any content that we want to display to the user will be held. Body opening tags begin the body. P, I'm a web, new web developer. In some text in a paragraph element. Closing tag ends the body. There can be only one body element in an HTML file. Indentation. While indent HTML code isn't required, doing so is good practice because it makes your code easier to read and visualize the nesting levels. Here's how to indent the previous code block. Notice how it's a lot easier to read this way. We recommend two spaces for indentations. Instructions. The ancient Greeks believed that there were four elements that everything under the sun was made up of. Fire, water, earth, air. Create an elemental.html file that shows the four elements in the browser. Make sure that it's indented nicely too. All right, so create an HTML file that shows the four elements in the browser. Okay, so body p fire water Earth, air, and then slash body. Um, I'm not sure if that's 
an elemental dot html i feel like we have to change something but fire water earth air all right that was it all right headings let's look at some more elements suppose we want to add a headline to our website that displays a news article. Here's how we would do it using an H1 heading element and a P tag, paragraph element. There are six levels of head, section headings from H1 to H6. Here's the result. They get smaller as you go down. Uh, only one H1 element should be used in an HTML file, line break. Suppose we also want to add a new line within a paragraph element. Pressing the enter won't do us any good because HTML ignores multiple spaces and line breaks within elements. So we must use the BR break tag here. The BR break tag adds a line break, as you can see here. Um, a self-closing tag doesn't need to be closed manually by a closing tag, i.e. it does not have a separate closing tag. The break tag is the first one we have encountered. All right, our instructions are the New York Times is an American daily newspaper that has been around since 1851. Let's find out what was happening in the news on the day you were born. Create a newspaper.html file. Find the New York Times newspaper from your birth date and using their site map. Recreate an article title and a blurb. All right, so I'm going to open up a new window and go to New York Times for my birthday. Let's see. Um, all right, in order to do that, I have to subscribe. So I'm just going to type news from my birthday. All right, recreate an article's title and blurb. So I'm gonna do, mm, here's one, the world news. We'll do um, H1. What what happened? Oops. Today in history. And then we'll do a pair. Oh wait, we first we need to do a body. And then we'll do h1 and then we'll do p close that all right and then we'll say i mean it's not really important what we say so i'm just going to say um a person born this day will be 37 years old today and then we're going to do a break and then we're going to say Taurus is the sun sign of a person born on this day all right so we need a H1 to H3 heading element, a paragraph element, and a break. I uh, complete. All right. Now on to the next one. Text formatting. Now that we know how to display basic text, how, how do we bold sentences, italicize new words, underline important phrases, and more? To do that, we need text formatting elements. They make default text look fancier. Here are some common ones. B to bold, I to italicize, underline to underline, U to underline, S to strike through text. 
and this is what it looks like here. The B element is just for bolding text stylistically. HTML also has a strong element used to convey that the content inside is important as well as styling it to bold. So um, where it says mandatory, wait, no. Yeah, mandatory is bold. And then, okay, I thought they were gonna have a strong element. No, they just bolded that, okay. Um, the tags above are good for learning how to style text with basic HTML, but are no longer best practice in web development. Other ways to style text will be covered in the CSS course. Suppose you have a soul-sucking corporate job where you take notes in ex executive meetings. Can you recreate the exact format of the corporate jargon below in corporate.html? Okay, here's the copy. So we're going to do body slash body. And then we're going to do um, paragraph, close it. And then let me type this up, cutting down, ramping up. We have a robust strategy for low hanging fruits, mission critical objectives that move the needle at all costs. It's time to double down on revenue growth while cutting costs. This is a win-win initiative. A win for us and our amazing shareholders. And then we're going to need a break and then p dot s after several strong sales months we have decided to print employee I thought that said appreciation tests and I was like, what kind of appreciation is that? Tease. These shirts will go on sale. Oh, we got to buy them. Wow. All right. I wish this um, did the word wrap thing because this is going to be a pain in the butt to edit this way. Okay. So... Cutting down, ramping up. We want that to be bold. I guess all of this is um, italicized, it seems. So we'll do... Let me run this. Okay, cutting down, ramping up for low hanging. So this is gonna be a strike through low hanging fruits. All right, and then we've got cutting costs, which is underlined. Uh, before the period and then we've got employee so this is going to be bold appreciation tees it looks like it's before the cutting costs low hanging fruits I'm not sure if all this is supposed to be italicized, but let's run it. Okay. 
New item unlocked, rubber duck. Rubber duck debugging is a classic technique used by developers to debug code. By explaining the code line by line to a rubber duck, you can break down the code into smaller pieces and potentially identify the error. It's silly. We know. All right, guys, I'm going to go ahead and end this episode here, but we are, we finished up to number four on the exercises. Let me know in the comments what you guys think of this new coding codex. And I will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for hanging out. Bye.